these are just going to be a few pictures of the Bet Selma up in Camden, Maine, before her life down here with me. Um, there's one of where she's at Artisan Boat Works. There's one of where she's in the water. There's one of Les, he's in the middle, who's actually in the previous picture, and in the next, there he is behind the pipe. There he is in his khakis. There he is in his khakis again, looking rather dapper. Then there's Alec Brainerd and Les himself. And out of respect for Alec's family and the other people that were in the photos of blurred them out except for Alec and then there's Dominic who captained the Betzel at one time she's always had an American flag on her stern and then there's a wedding party and then here she is uh, in at bars at Artisan Boat Works these are all circa 2016 Just right off the bat, I fell in love with her. Just right off the bat. There's her Cat 3304B diesel.
It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> She'll think he's crazy. Well, yes, yeah, she does. She knows that, though. Yeah.
we have a 1945 38 foot, 12 foot beam lobster yacht. And if you can tell, I'm bending over because I'm taller than what this cabin is. I'm 6'3, and this cabin is barely that, and I'm not standing up straight. But, anyways. Built in 1945 by Ralphie Worcester and his brother. Uh, they were not any two known boat builders. Uh, so it, this boat's not a Malcolm Brewer or a, a Chumley Rich boat or a. I can't remember the guy's last name, but it's, his name's Sonny. Not any of those. Uh, she was built in 1945. And she Taken out of the water for the last time and put up on the dry, on the dry, up on the hard in uh, 2015. Went up for sale in 2016. I saw her in 2018. Uh, started negotiation process. Bought her, had her shipped down here, and she don't look like much by no means. She's 75 years old. She's an old lady. She's tired. A uh, old battle axe. Will. She uh, she's old. She's tired. There's there's no denying that. You can look around this and you can see all the all the dirt and all everything else. The cracks in the wood and everything. Cracks in the fan, especially. Good Lord, you you can see all that. But to me, she's perfect, and she's perfect to me for a reason. She's a perfect candidate to rebuild Quint's trusty fishing vessel, the Orca, from the 1975 classic first summer blockbuster ever. Jaws, made by the very young and talented Steven Spielberg at the time. Why is she the perfect candidate? Well, the Orca was 38 feet at 12 foot wide beam. This boat, 38 feet, 12 foot wide beam. Of course, there's some inches in there too, which I'm not going to go into because when you get into specifics, people tend to tune out on that. But uh, if anybody wants to know the specifics, feel free to message me with a comment. I'll answer something I'm going to do my best to do is check the comments on these videos. Um, this is a down east style boat. The Orca was a Nova Scotian boat or a Cape Islander. They, they go by both names. Um, this boat is very unique. She was built under secretive circumstances, believe it or not, when her hull was locked up and her lines were all done. Her original blueprints and drawings were burned. And she was made with a new steam bending technique, which I will not get into right now because that's quite a long story and a long explanation. But it works. And uh, she needs a lot of work, there's no denying that. But I believe this is going to be really something special when I get done with it. Uh, the number one biggest thing that's going to be changed, her gunnels are too wide. Her gunnels are too wide. They're 14 inches across. The gunnels are, the Orca had right at six and a half, seven inch gunnels on the side. Her transom uh, is rounded at the back and it's too rounded at the top. So that's going to need to be made flat against the back and slightly rounded at the top to allow for the water to run off. She, uh, Cabin is going to have to be widened, obviously. Um, she has old can uh, chain and cable steering. I don't want that. I'm going to go with hydraulic. Uh, of course, there's setbacks to both of those two, which I'll get into later in another video. Uh, the engine is a Caterpillar 3304 diesel. It's going to have to come out. Uh, they don't. They don't. It was made in the 50s and the 60s. They don't make it anymore. Her actual first engine was a Buick engine. And she ran like the devil. Lord, she ran like the devil. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if uh, at some point there was some run, run, rum running going on. I'm just kidding. But it wouldn't surprise me. She was fast as the devil, though, with that Buick engine. Big V8. And then she had a Mac engine, I know. And then maybe a third. And this is the fourth one. This boat was actually sunk one time, actually. Uh, she was sunk at the dock. Uh, that's another story. But she was actually sunk. This engine was in it. They raised her up, then, you're about to hear a car passing on my road, I'll wait till it passes.
Now that that's over, she was sunk at the dock, and uh, they raised her up, drained the water out, and then flushed the oil out, flushed the engine out, ran like a top, and it's ran so I'm going to cut this short. I'll continue it. So, since I don't remember where I left off, since it rained for quite a while, I'm just going to start where I think I was at. If I remember right, which I probably don't, I think I left off talking about how she was the perfect candidate for the Orca. She's the perfect candidate because the Orca was 38 feet and some change and 12 feet wide with some change at her widest point on the beam, which was right there at the windows. Uh, the, the, the best Selma, which is what this boat is, is 38 feet and some change and 12 feet and some change. The beam. Uh, she's tired. She's 75 years old. She's had a long, hard life. She was drag she was dragging scallops in Camden, Maine, in Camden, Maine for the longest. And during the summer, she'd be a tour boat. And in 1979, when Ralph Worcester died, uh, Les Bex bought this boat, and he sold her in uh, 2000. And I want to say 13, if I remember right, 14, somewhere in there. And uh, sold her to Alec Brainerd at uh, Artisan Boat Works. And they, Artisan Boat Works, bought the Bet Selma and the Lively Lady. And they used them as tour boats. And the Lively Lady was, they're the exact same boat, pretty much. And she was in a little bit better shape, so from a money standpoint, it just made more sense to run the lively lady and put the best Selma up on the dry. So she was up on the dry and they just decided to put her up for sale. And in 2016, there was an article and a car just went back by. There was an article saying that she needed to be saved because if she wasn't she was going to be cut up in September and luckily they didn't do that because I didn't find her until October of 2017 started negotiations that November and uh, got her paid for had her shipped down here and like I said she's tired the uh owner slash uh, owner of the boat works company uh, described her as dilapidated she's rough there's no denying that this the best selling was rough or as I like to call her Betsy she's rough there there's no denying that she's it, you can see that you can see that on the deck you can see that on the paint chips on the side over here on on the boards um, you can see it in the deck uh, these these uh, benches were, were for the tours, and they were uh, made by Worcester himself. And uh, these will actually be going back to the Worcester family, because uh, I got in contact with them, and I thought they might like a piece of their grandfather's legacy. So they'll be going back to the family. Um, Les Bex's son, I haven't talked to him yet about what he wants. Yet, but there's some stuff on here I think he will want, and if he doesn't, it's fine. Uh, I got a bunch of her life rafts, <coughs> voice crack, excuse me. I got a bunch of her life rafts. Um, there's one, two, three, four of them. I took them all because uh, when the boat was shipped, they were all tied down here on top of the engine compartment. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, I know what I was talking about. I was talking about how the boat sank. I'll get back to that in a minute. But, uh, I've got those. Uh, I'm not going to use them. Uh, I might keep one for nostalgia's sake. The rest of them probably sell. You know, if anybody wants them, you know, whenever this video goes up, you know, uh, probably be a while because I want to record a good bit before 
I start to release things. Um, Betsy was described as being dilapidated. For a boat that is 75 years, she is not dilapidated. I believe he misspoke, uh, used the wrong word in the wrong context. When I think of dilapidated, as most people do, if you think of a house as dilapidated, you think of a house that's falling in on itself. Betsy's not. If she was dilapidated, she would not be able to support her own weight on the kill, let alone on stands. She would fall right apart. Now, granted, there, there's wood that is a little bit punky, and there's some wood that's deteriorated. Like, I can look right now and look at the deck and look at the sides over here and see where there is some. Uh, especially where you see these little uh, orange spots uh, on the wood. And that is from where electrolysis is taking place and what that is. It's where salt water gets in contact with the head of the screws. And unfortunately, this boat still has a lot of the original iron fastenings. Because in the 40s, they didn't really use bronze. Uh, from what I was able to find out through talking to multiple people, multiple shipwrights. So she still has a lot of iron fastenings, which is not to be replaced. And replaced with uh, silicon-dipped bronze fastenings. Um, the thing about rust is, with wood, rust will eat away at wood, and it will deteriorate it, and it, it eats it like an acid, if that makes any sense. Um, and unfortunately, that's happened to this boat. She's very beautiful, like I can look at some of the bolts right there, but they're regular metal. They're regular metal, I'm looking at them right now. There's actually one right here. I don't know if I can get it off. I'll try hitting it with some WD-40 or this special mixture that I make that will remove any type of rusted on object that is screwed in. I'll do a video about that at a later date. Um, can't give away all my secrets just yet. But now that I remember the last thing I was talking about, this boat was actually sank in the dock at one point. And um, they raised her. And, of course, engine was flooded, everything else. So, drained everything out of the engine, re-lubed it, re it. Put several cans of oil through it. Fired right up. It was fine. She has had a long life. Like I said, she's tired. And she's far from dilapidated. She's rough. She's tired. That's all it is. And uh, to be honest, in a way, I hated to take her out of camp where she's been for 75 years. I hated to, in a way. But as with all things, change is good. Change is a good thing. And this is one of them things where change, repair, fixes, new life is a good thing. This is one of those situations. So... I really hope y'all stick around with this, and I know I've made this video probably 20 minutes by now. I'll probably cut it down, I might not, I don't know. Uh, this is my first video, so maybe y'all won't hold that against me. Uh, it's not scripted. You know, I, I don't plan on scripting my very first video. I'm going to let y'all see me for who I am and how I do things. Uh, now, when I actually do the next part of uh, the video, then the actual examination of her, then I will. But thank you for watching.